This video is the 2019 Level 3 Waves exam, question 3. Waves question 3. Right, there we go. We've got lasers are used extensively in scientific research as they are point sources of monochromatic coherent light. Um, in a lab, interference patterns can be demonstrated by shining a laser through a diffraction grating and observing the pattern on the screen. So we've got laser. Um, it's green laser, hopefully you can sort of see that. We've got central, bright maximum, first order, second order, third order, yada, yada, yada. Um, picture above shows three different colours from top to bottom. It's got violet at the top, green, and then red. For those of you that are colourblind, um, a laser light shone through the same diffraction green. Um, describe using physics principles why violet um, maxima, these ones here, um, are closer together than Rex red maxima. So the first thing you're going to do is you can either write uh, n lambda, oops, equals d sine theta, or um, n lambda equals d, and you can, uh, I'm not going to go over it, but in your formula sheet, um, you got x over l, um, and that is because sine theta for small angles is approximately equal to tan theta, which is equal to x over l. Um, which is equal to theta for really, really small angles. It's a small angle approximation just for you guys know why these formulas are so similar. It's just because x, x over L comes from that, but I haven't really de derived anything. But anyway, so violet um, has a shorter wavelength than red light. Red light has a wavelength of about 610 nanometers. Violet has a wavelength of about 400 nanometers, plus or minus like 30, depends. Um, I think it's blue laser is like 410. Um, but anyway, so I'll pause this, I'll try and write a coherent answer, and then I'll discuss. Right, so I've said red light has a larger, uh, that should be larger wavelength. I've chucked in a lambda. Um, and it, red light's 630 nanometers, and blue light, blue light's about 410 nanometers, um, roughly. As the slit spacing, D, is the same, um, lambda is proportional to sine of the angle. It's not proportional to the angle, it's proportional to sine of the angle. Um, so larger wavelengths, red, I put bracket red, give larger angles, not of diffraction. It's larger angles to the first order maximum than blue. Um, I just did that out of habit, it's from level two. Um, then blue light. Larger angles to the first order mean um, the red spots are further apart, and that should be uh, maximum. Um, I should really talk about path difference as well, um, but I mean, it's only a chief question, it shouldn't really matter that much. But you could talk about, like, n lambda is essentially the path difference. That is literally it. So n lambda, larger, larger this, larger path difference means it's going to larger angles. Um, right. The diffraction grating has 400 slits per millimeter. Um, the angle between the center and the second order maxima um, is 20.7 for the violet, la uh, violet laser. So this is n equals two. Um, violet laser is. Oh, we're going to find out the wavelength. Um, oh, we're about to find out what the actual thing is. The slit separation is this. This is d. Uh, oh, show that the slit separation is this. Um, so this is slits per millimeter. Um, if you want to find out like what the actual length is, what you need to do is this is you need to go. Um, you'd need to times by it's it's inverse of this. I'm trying to think how to how to do it. Um, but really, it's it's inverse. I'll just think of a clear way. Right, I thought of it. I've got slits per millimeter. I want meters per slit. There you go. That's the way to do it. So here I've got slits per millimeter. I want meters per per slit. Um, so I've got 400 slits in one millimeter. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Uh, I've got, and this is per millimeter. Um, so I could either divide this by a thousand to find out how many slits per meter and then just flip that number around to get meters per slit. Um, but what I'll probably do is I'll just go millimeters, or I'll just turn this into actual millimeters. So it'd be, uh, ah, stuff it. I'll divide this by, so 400 divided by, what do we got, a thousand? Um, yep. And that'll give me how many slits per meter times by a thousand. Take it back. Times by a thousand. That'll be how many slits per meter, and that's going to give me four hundred thousand. So one meter divided by how many slits? Four hundred thousand does actually equal 
2.5 up here to do that my calculator to show you guys 1 over 400 1 2 3 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6 times 10 to the negative 6 um, meters right calculate the wavelength of the laser light um, n lambda equals d sine theta in other words um, lambda is equal to d sine theta uh, divided by n which is equal to 2.5 uh, times 10 to the negative 6 times sine uh, we've got 27.7 uh, 20 divided by 2 um, and this equals uh, 400 and well, 4.41 times 10 to the negative 7 so 4.41 times 10 to the negative 7 uh, meters um, so lambda blue is equal to 441 nanometers um, which uh, that's this is actually 4.418 so this should actually be 4.412 um, this is eight there I should have rounded up um, yeah 442 that's pretty close to blue that's kind of like a slightly lighter blue um, right next question um, explain the role in diffraction and interference in producing interference patterns when light passes through a diffraction grating assume the light is monochromatic um, I'll just pause and just write like a, an answer and then discuss right so I said when light passes through a diffraction grating with slits slightly larger than the wavelength um, I, I couldn't really fit it in if I was doing this exam I'd actually write I'd actually use these back pages because this is I mean you could really go into detail with this question um, light diffracts that's a year 12 concept or whatever points on the screen where light sources from different slits are in phase and have a path difference of a whole wavelength um, well actually a whole number number of wavelengths Will constructively interfere causing a bright spot dark spots are caused when the path difference between slits is equal to half a number of waves oh, half a wave yeah or the, mm, and just destructive interference occurs I think I would actually just because it's a video I can just talk through it but the actual like the full answer dark spots are caused when the path difference between the slits is equal to half a wave um, or one and a half, or two and a half, or three and a half, or four and a half, or five and a half. It's just when they're out of phase by half a wavelength. So each each light wave is out of phase by half a wavelength. Um, you'll get deconstructive interference. I'm not really sure like what they're really looking for. I know because I know I've got the answers that all of these points are fine. You only need two points to get merit. Um, but that could have been an excellent answer. Um, right. Next question. The wavelength of light from a green laser is 532 nanometers. Well, 530. 5.32 times negative 7. Um, describe and explain what would be seen at point 28.6 from the center of a green interference pattern. Uh, calculation should accompany your discussion. So what we're going to do is we're assuming they're using the same. So we're going to use n lambda. n lambda is equal to d uh, sine theta. In other words, n is equal to uh, what do we got? d sine theta divided by lambda which is going to be equal to 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6. That's just right there. Um, so 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6 sine 28.6 uh, divided by 5.32 times 10 to the negative 7. And I'll just calculate. So as you can see, I just calculated it now. I've got the answer divided by the wavelength. We get 2.24. Um, right now this is a tricky one this is a diffraction grading um, so if this was just a single uh, like if it was just just two slits at 2.24 two four is basically it's quarter so two and a quarter um, if it was two slits at a quarter you'd have the waves quarter out of phase so you'd expect to see about, it's not quite 25% because our sign graphs, but you'd expect to see a little bit of brightness but not complete darkness. Um, however, because this is a diffraction grating, um, it'll be dark because all the other points along the grating will, at this point there, will also will be out of phase. How do I even explain? Yeah, they'll be out of phase 
um, at this point. So you'd expect, um, I might just pause and write, like I would expect a dark spot and then fill in the rest and then it's just explain. Right, so I've said I've expected dark spot it is, as it is between a bright spot, anti-node, um, and a dark node spot. Um, in diffraction gratings, maximum and minima are more defined due to having multiple sources. Um, and I've said um, uh, at a path difference of a quarter, the total effect is, is destructive interference. Um, I'm not entirely sure, like, I've sort of thought about this quite a lot. Um, I think it's more of a contrast thing. Because you've got way more sources, the bright spot's going to be way more bright, and the dark spot is obviously going to be dark. So anywhere like off the bright spot um, will be dark by comparison. Um, but yeah, if you have a diffraction grading, the whole pattern is way more defined, and you get way more like the bright spots are way brighter because there's way more constructive interference happening at those points because there's more of um, more like sources landing there. Um, yeah. Might just leave it at that.